Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them. Help each and every one of us at St. Patrick Parish to go, make, baptize, and teach so that each person that we meet will fall in love with you and seek your love in the sacraments. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now turn into worship by praising God with our opening hymn, number 213, Holy, 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 number 213. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. With your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God. Have 
Manifest your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy. Bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, You say, the Lord's way is not fair. Hear now, house of Israel, is it my way that is unfair, or rather, are not your ways unfair? When someone virtuous turns away from virtue to commit iniquity and dies, it is because of the iniquity he committed that he must die. But if he turns from the wickedness he has committed and does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life. Since he has turned away from all the sins that he has committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the Spirit, 
any compassion and mercy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, with the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing. Do nothing out of selfishness or out of vainglory. Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves, each looking out not for his own interests, but also for those of others. Have you, in, have you in the same attitude that is also in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped? Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, What is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, Son, go out and work in the vineyard today. He said in reply, I will not. But afterwards changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave the same order. He said in reply, Yes, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did his father's will? They answered, The first. Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him, but tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet even when you saw that, you did not later change your mind and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. As I was pondering over this Gospel today, wanted to think about a few things. One is, of course, Jesus isn't saying that uh, the actions of prostitutes and the extortions by the tax collectors are compatible with the kingdom of God, and so that's why they're entering in. But rather, rather they are people who received the word of God and repented. They changed their ways. And that's why they enter the kingdom of God. Before these professionals who uh, they advocate for the moral law and they do those things, but they find also the loopholes and try to find all those loopholes so that they don't have to do exactly what is right. And so they feel they have no need of repentance. And so Jesus is saying they're entering before you because they recognize their brokenness and they're repenting. 
They're calling on God for mercy, and that's the difference. And I think this is important for us today. Even, I'm sure, there are very few of us in here who've extorted people by collecting taxes or by prostitution. And yet, and yet, the Lord is looking at us and saying, you too must repent. He calls this for all of us, repentance from our sins. And I was, as I was pondering over this last week, I was saying, yeah, okay, there's this area I need to repent, this area I need to repent. Okay, Lord, enough already. There's only so much I can do at one time. But the Lord is calling us to change our lives. The thing I found most irritating in my life as a priest is when someone comes up to me and says, oh, Father, that was such a beautiful homily. My daughter needs to hear that. Or my husband needs to hear that. Or my neighbor needs to hear that. But the word of God is useless if it doesn't pierce my heart. My preaching is useless if it doesn't pierce your hearts. I tell you, most of the time it pierces my own heart as well. And so we got to say, am I allowing God to speak to me? Because he has a word for me every time we come to Mass. He has a word for you. He wants to speak to you. And while it may also apply to your son or daughter or husband or, or your neighbor, if you're not hearing it for yourself and allowing it to pierce through and say, what is God saying to me today that I need to change? We're missing the point. And Jesus is saying, you know, those tax collectors and sinners that you're looking at, they're entering the kingdom before you. So the Lord invites us not just to be people that say, yes, I'll go where you send me, yet but actually to do the work that he asks us to do. And even if we say no at first, if we repent, the Lord will say, yes, come into my kingdom. What are those areas in our lives? What are those areas in our hearts that we need to allow God's light to come and heal, that we need to transform? The Lord is saying, take a good look at yourself, not on your own, but with the Spirit of God. Take a good look at yourself and invite the Spirit of God to come, bring transformation, to bring that conversion, that repentance that will allow us to enter the kingdom. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus, visible and invisible, and in Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the cross of Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, Proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Remember your mercies, O Lord, we sang in the responsorial psalm today. We ask now for God to shower those mercies upon all those in need. 
for Pope Francis, bishops, priests, deacons, and all the faithful, that we may be strengthened by the grace of the Holy Spirit to continue proclaiming the dignity of all human life, from conception to natural death, the unique meaning of marriage, and the importance of a religious liberty for all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the bishops and all those taking part in the synod and synodality, which takes place this month in Rome, that they may discern the way forward for the church in its third millennium. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may respect life from conception to natural death and throughout every point in between, protecting especially those who are vulnerable or forgotten. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the graces of clarity and active response in the discernment of our Heavenly Father's will, for all those considering a vocation to the priesthood or a consecrated life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have turned away or fallen away from the church may yet hear Christ's gentle and merciful call to unity and community in his name, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of all who have died recently, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of Matthew J. Janos and Lynn Kuleza, and for all our beloved deceased, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers of this assembly, and for all the prayers written in our parish book of intercessions, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful God, your Son emptied himself and obediently accepted death, death on a cross, to redeem us sinners. May that ultimate sign of your love for us give us confidence that you hear these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen.
my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with, the, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Save us, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Patrick and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Please be seated. So this Thursday, we'll be having a Mass for creation, for the end of the season of creation. That'll be Thursday, October 5th at 7 p.m., and all are welcome to attend. Friday and Saturday are first Friday and first Saturday, and so we have 8 a.m. Mass on each of those days. I now invite Mary Ellen Costa forward to speak to us about the light of the world. Hello. Hi. That's a nice welcome. As Father said, my name's Mary Ellen Costa. I have been a parishioner of St. Patrick's Church for over 38 years, but until recently I knew very few people in church other than family and close friends. I have always had faith, but my faith in action over the years could best be described as inconsistent. Over the past decades, my attendance at church has waxed and waned. When I did attend church, my envelope in hand, I would listen to the readings and gospel, but not really hear the messages. If Father Vaughn's homily was a bit long-winded, I might have missed the back half. My apologies, (laughs) Father. I felt like at times I was going through the motions, doing what was expected of a good Catholic, but not really feeling my faith. I felt like I had become a lukewarm Catholic and I knew that was not okay. A year and a half ago, my daughter-in-law, Jenna, told me about this Light of the World retreat being held at St. Patrick's and asked if I wanted to go with her. We talked about it for a bit, and she expressed that she was afraid it will be all perfect Catholics attending. I shared that I was worried that there would be all overly zealous, in-your-face Catholics there. My second concern was that I hadn't read the Bible in many years, and I feared being put on the spot. In the end, we both decided to attend because we acknowledged that we wanted to feel our faith more deeply and also desired a closer connection with God. So here's what I have to report. Number one, while I did not find any perfect Catholics at Light of the World, there was a group of fine, friendly, flawed Catholics, just like me, who were all at different places in their faith journeys. Two, there were no overly zealous in your faith face Catholics, but rather a wonderful group of people, many who I now call dear friends, who were willing to share their stories, their faith strategies, and their deep love for God. Three, there were no Bible quizzes, though I did hear different Bible verses over the course of the weekend. I never felt pressed to share. If I wanted to share, I shared, and if I didn't, I listened. Four, there was a lot of good food. At Light of the World, Jesus provides many more food options than fish and loaves of bread. For me, Light of the World was a spiritual wake-up call. I came away from the weekend with clearer direction for my faith journey, and the drive to address the parts of my faith I had been neglecting. It was a powerful, uplifting experience, and it helped me bring God from the edge of my life to the center. So, if you wish to draw closer to Jesus, or your spiritual flame is lit but is too frequently blown out by the noise and whirlwind of the world, or you simply wish to become a brighter light in your little part of the world, I invite you to take a little leap of faith and join us for a weekend of sharing, learning, good food, and most importantly, fellowship. I know you will be glad that you did. I will be available after Mass if anyone has any questions. There's also a flyer in the bulletin this week with information about the retreat, and you can call the parish office to sign up. Thank you. The Light of the World Retreat is indeed free, uh, so you can come, uh, even if you can't afford other things. And with all that food, maybe you should send your teenagers so that they can actually pay off your food bill. Um, (laughs) 
But in any case, uh, it, it is an incredible weekend. I invite you to come and experience a, a powerful experience of God's love uh, through the sacraments and through the people around us. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. The prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and the other evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. Please join us in singing the song that sends us forth, number 389, God Has Chosen Me, number 389. God has chosen me, God has chosen me, to bring good news to the poor. God has chosen me, God has chosen me, to bring new sight to those searching for light. God has chosen me, chosen me, and to tell the world that God's kingdom is near, to remove oppression and break down fear. Yes, God's time is near, God's time is near. God's time is near, God's time is near. God has chosen me, God has chosen me to set a light on you fire. God has chosen me, God has chosen me to bring to birth a new kingdom on earth. God has chosen me, chosen me, and to tell the world that God's kingdom is near.